So hey guys, welcome to another Warframe video and today I have another Warframe build that I would like to share with you. I haven't done one of those in a while and it's gonna be Resonating Quake Banshee. When you look around the internet you will find a ton of different Quake builds and I did try a lot of them but I wasn't quite happy with any of them. Some of them did a ton of damage but were horrendously energy inefficient and some of them were able to Quake even the biggest tile sets in the game but they didn't do any damage. The build I'm about to show you wasn't designed to do obscene amounts of damage with each tremor, nor it was designed to cover the biggest houses in the game. The one thing I was aiming for was balance, so it is efficient enough to where if you have the Zunuric Focus School, you don't really need EV Trinity for energy, it has just enough range to cover the majority of the defense tile sets in the game, and just enough damage to do about 20 waves on Hydron. The cool thing about this build is that if you don't mind having a V polarity in the aura slot, so you use something like Steel Charge in there instead of Corrosive Projection, it's just a 1 forma build for the regular Banshee where you add a dash for Primed Flow, and it's a zero forma build for Banshee Prime since she has an additional dash polarity. But if you just have regular Banshee and you want to do the full builds, you will need to forma one to change the V polarity in the aura into a dash and then another dash for primed flow. Now, Corrosive Projection is definitely the best aura you can use here if you want to take this setup versus the Grenier or the Corrupted, because Quake does mostly blast damage, and while blast damage is generally somewhat neutral when it comes to dealing damage, it deals no extra damage to flesh or alloyed armored units, so the toughest units in the Grenier faction, like Bombards, and it does 25% less damage versus units that have ferrite armor, so heavy gunners and the lower tier Grenier units. So while you can easily swap it out for Energy Siphon if you're fighting the Corpus or the Infested, I would definitely keep in Corrosive Projection if you're going up against Grenier or Corrupted. Then I'm using Prime Continuity and this is fairly important because it balances the negative duration we get from Fleeting Expertise. This provides a lot of base efficiency for Quake because if I were to just remove Prime Continuity, Quake would drain 6 energy instead of 3.2. Then I'm using Primed Flow which just gives me more energy and this allows me to sustain Quake for much longer, especially once it reaches 20 stacks. For Power Strength I'm using Intensify and Power Drift and this is just enough Power Strength to get you through 20 waves on Hydron. I tried swapping Cunning Drift for Transient Fortitude but the extra damage was in my opinion a little bit unnecessary for what I want to do with this build and I also wasn't very happy with the reduced range and duration. Next mod on the menu is Resonating Quake and this is perhaps the most important mod because for every second that we quake, the quake range is going to be increased by 1 meter, it's going to do 100 more damage but it's also going to cost 1 more energy. And this stacks up to 20 so while it will drain a lot of energy at 20 stacks, it will also allow you to cover a ginormous area and do a ton of damage. Then for power efficiency, I'm using Fleeting Expertise, that's two ranks from the top to get rid of some of that unnecessary negative duration and streamline, which almost caps me on efficiency. And finally, I'm using Stretch and Cunning Drift for range. And as I've said already, this is just enough power range to cover the majority of defense style sets. And I'm also not running any defensive mods and that's simply because this build is designed to do one thing. It's designed to quake all the time and quake stunlocks absolutely everything it hits. So there is not really a reason to run defensive mods when no one is shooting at you. Now while I'm very happy with the way this build turned out and it's fantastic for a lot of different things, it is not perfect. There are some units that are simply too strong for you to kill them with quake. For the Grenier, the biggest offenders are high level Eximus Bombards and Heavy Gunners as well as Haika Masters and Haikas in general. It's not that big of a deal if they spawn at the start of the wave, but if they spawn towards the end, you will probably run out of energy before you kill them, so the best thing to do is to simply stop quaking and go kill them with your weapon. However, on Hydron at least, the waves 1 to 15 are absolutely fine. This only starts to happen sort of around wave 15, so once you hit wave 15, you can either get one of your teammates to go there and just kill the Eximus units or the random Heika Master, or you just stop quaking and go kill them yourself. And this doesn't really seem to be an issue with the amount of damage the build can do, it's more about the enemies and how high their resistances are, because I did try going in with a full on power strength build and EV Trinity to supply me with energy and I was still not able to kill them efficiently. But aside from an odd Eximus Bombard or Haika Master here and there, you can easily quake your way through 20 waves. And at the end of the day, going around and killing a random unit here and there is not that big of a deal because at least you can pick up your loot. The biggest offenders for the Infested are Ancients and it doesn't matter if it's Disruptors or Healers, they both take bugger all damage from your quake. And since they spawn in pretty much every defense wave, you will have to go around at the end of each wave and clean them out, unless you of course want to spend 300 energy to kill 2 units. But once again, you have to pick up loot somehow. 
And the biggest offenders for the Corpus faction are of course nullifiers because they nullify your quake and they are so much of a pain in the ass that unless you have a teammate who's gonna run around and pop their bubble I would not recommend taking this against them at all. Now why would you want to use this build? Well first of all if you want to farm relics going on Hydron with a quaking banshee is one of the best things you can do. It's also fantastic for getting focus if you have a lens on banshee. If you don't you're gonna get bugger all because the majority of the experience is gonna go to banshee. However, this only applies to you, not your party member. So if you have a friend that needs to level something up really quickly, just take him onto Hydron, make him stand to the side while you quake the entire thing and he's gonna be rank 30 in no time. If you're not a fan of Hydron though and you prefer Zini, this setup is fantastic for Zini as well because if you stand in the middle you can quake pretty much the entire Tal set. You're not gonna quake your way through the entire round, but you can just quake for a little bit, get it to 20 stacks, then stop, run around, pick up a couple of energy orbs, kill a couple of enemies and start quaking again. So yeah, I'm extremely happy with how this build turned out, so I hope you will like it and I thank you very much for watching as always. And before I end the video, I just want to say thank you to these two gentlemen right here. They helped me while I was tinkering with the build and kind of finalizing it, so they helped me a level up and they were also very generous and gave me some gifts. So thank you very much guys, you are awesome. So I hope you will give this build a try and I will see you next time. Bye bye!